Liberty University has announced it will replace Dr. Ergen Kanner as Dean of Liberty Baptist Theological Seminary. This comes after a university board investigation into allegations that Kanner lied about growing up as a Muslim. Jeremy Mills has been following this story. And Jeremy, the school says Kanner will stay on as a professor. He is, after all, one of the most popular professors at LU Noreen, but these allegations appear to have damaged his standing at the university. The four-member board says it could find no evidence showing Dr. Kanner was not a Muslim who converted to Christianity as a teenager, as some has suggested. But they did find discrepancies in other facts about his past. School officials would not go on camera for this story, choosing only to release a written statement. Kanner will step down as dean when his contract expires. June 30th. Reporting live in the Lynchburg studio, Jeremy Mills, ABC 13 News. But I, I did want to address a few issues. Some of you may have noticed uh, that the AP story, actually a follow-up AP story on the Ergen Canner scandal appeared on Fox News yesterday. When Fox News has it, you know, between all of their stuff about, you know, what uh, a Hollywood star just got, uh, you know, a facelift and all that important news that Fox News tends to have out there. When Fox has picked it up, then it is all over the place. The irony was the, the whole story was about how uh, the, the, the supporters of Eric and Cantor are disappearing. <laughs> I felt like I felt like writing to the reporter and saying, "I know where they are. <laughs> they're right behind me. Okay, uh, they're, they're, I know exactly where they are, and they have not fallen silent uh, in any way, shape, or form." Uh, you know, I, I don't know if um, I have been told. I've been told lots of things. Uh, my my email box is a very interesting place these days. And it does make me wonder if someone may not be monitoring all email being sent from liberty.edu uh, to domain name aomin.org. Um, <laughs> that does, does make me wonder. But um, I, I have been told that there has been a very concerted effort on the part of Ergen Kanner's supporters uh, contacting pastors all across uh, the United States uh, attempting to create a groundswell of of support for for Ergen Canner, and I, I don't see that happening. I think a lot of folks uh, who I think anyone anyone uh, who takes more than half an hour to just sit down and do some reading and some watching, just just watch some videos. Just I mean, it would take you a lot longer than that to actually even begin to review. The amount of information, just reading through the court documents and and the stuff that's been posted, and uh, it, it would it would take you a long, long time. And I understand that a lot of people don't have that kind of time uh, to to invest. But the fact is, if you just spent that amount of time, I think that's why there's silence, because you just have to go, oh boy, well, what's the response to all this? What What's the answer to court documentation that someone lives in the United States in 1969 and their own words? More than once now, we've documented that Ergen Kanner said that. Yeah, moved here in 1969. And so one of the thoughts that crossed my mind was, okay, these, these uh, presentations with Veritas Seminary are taking place in July. Allegedly, we are going to have some kind of a um, result from the Liberty Seminary investigation, Liberty University investigation, by June 30th. What if they come out and say, Ergen Kanner has been lying uh, in churches? What if he's no longer the president of uh, Liberty Seminary uh, come July? Will he still be speaking at those conferences? Will the results of the inquiry be clear enough to address whether Ergen Kanner is an expert on Islam or not? And if he is, what's the basis of it? Is it solely the fact that he wrote on the Crusades? A fact that I've brought out many, many times that people like Peter Lumpkins don't listen to everything that I say. They just, you know, very selective. Uh, is that it? Is, is that, or is it not clearly obvious in his own presentations, that his claim for expertise in regards to Islam 
is his upbringing as a Sunni Muslim in Turkey. Ankara, over on the border with Iraq. Now, a couple things crossed my mind at that point. Um, the first that I think is really important, and, and I, I'm sort of criticizing myself here, and I've got lots of people who have been joining me in that. Of late. Why is it that Liberty University is being seen as the final authority in this matter? I mean, certainly in regards to whether Ergen Kanner should be the president of Liberty Baptist Theological Seminary, yeah, Liberty University is the final authority on that, for obvious reasons. But I simply have one question to ask all of my friends and those who are not my friends in the audience, and that is, where is the church here? Where, where is the church? Christian evangelist Ravi Zacharias has never enrolled at the University of Cambridge. He merely audited classes there for one semester in 1990. This has not stopped him from telling fans and donors that he was educated in Cambridge and from claiming that he studied under various renowned Cambridge scholars who he refers to as my professors. I studied at Cambridge for some time. Uh, one of my professors of quantum theory there, John Pokinghorn. I remember in my days at Cambridge studying under a quantum physicist, John Pokinghorn. I studied under John Pokinghorn at Cambridge University. My professor of quantum, John Pokinghorn at Cambridge University. My work in Cambridge University was in the Romantic Poets. In my studies in English literature at Cambridge. I, I studied at Cambridge. Doing my studies at Cambridge. Under the philosophy department at Cambridge. My work at Cambridge. My days at Cambridge. Cambridge. My days at Cambridge. My days at Cambridge. Cambridge University. Imagine being in the most, one of the most prestigious universities in the world, having the most prestigious philosophy department. I went there, I studied under them. The University of Oxford has stated that Mr. Zacharias was never an employee of the university and that he has never held any formal position there. Mr. Zacharias nevertheless informs his fans and donors that he was an official lecturer at Oxford and sometimes calls himself a professor at Oxford, as we see in this clip here. Now I'm a professor at Oxford. I hope nobody quotes me, but Cambridge is prettier than Oxford. <laughs> now let's move from Ravi's public deceptions to his recent online, to his credit, non-physical sex scandal. On July 31st, 2017, Ravi filed a federal lawsuit against a married Canadian woman named Lori Ann Thompson. Now, as a lawyer, when I evaluate this case, I think that Ravi has been blackmailed. But you don't get blackmailed unless you've done something bad, and by his own admission, Ravi has. It's not just that he admits inappropriate conduct, as we have seen in paragraph 75, nor that he didn't report the relationship or the nude photos to his board right away, that he waited until after Ms. Thompson threatened legal action and after she accused him of using her to gratify his own sexual desires. And it's not just that he didn't even try very hard to terminate contact with Lorianne after the sexy photos started coming in. That's all kind of unflattering, but the really explosive stuff is found in a highly confidential legal letter to Ravi, where Lorianne's lawyer states that when she wished to confess the relationship to her husband, Ravi sent her an email threatening suicide. Attorney Mark Bryant told Ravi that he has a copy of that suicide email in his file, and we have to wonder, why would he bluff Ravi about something Ravi did not do? And although Ravi denies many things in his court filing, he did not deny making that written suicide threat. This is explosive stuff that the Christian media has avoided like a potato straight out of hell. Incidentally, Ravi settled his lawsuit last week on November 9th, 2017, so we may never know what exactly happened between Ravi and Lori Ann. I urge you, especially if you are a Christian who has donated money to Ravi, to contact him and ask him how much he paid Lori Ann for her silence. And did that money come from your donations? After all, did you really want your hard-earned money converted into 30 pieces of silver? And while you're at it, please ask Mr. Zacharias to publicly comment on what sure seems to be compelling evidence of systematic credential fraud. He can ignore you, of course, but at some point we're entitled to conclude that this charming gentleman has a lot of stuff in his closet that he does not want us to know about.
So anyways, welcome to the program today. Of course, um, unless you're living under a rock, um, your uh, Twitter feed, your Facebook feed is uh, just one story. To, well, there's two stories today, actually. Um, the major story that um, is all over the place producing a huge number of memes uh, is the passing of Ravi Zacharias. I was somewhat taken aback. Um, in light of the fact that the the announcement of stopping treatment was, I thought, just a matter of days ago. Um, but um, RZIM has, uh, has taken two uh, difficult uh, hits over the past a number of years, obviously with Robbie's passing today and then Nabil Qureshi um, had really wasn't with RZIM for a long period of time. Uh, but had become one of the primary speakers for at least a, a number of months, maybe a couple of years. I don't remember exactly how long it was. Um, but um, obviously, uh, our condolences go out to the family and to the, the ministry uh, as well, because RZIM is very large, and in my experience has sought to establish uh, a rather large uh, network uh, globally. And uh, so that means there's, you know, a lot of people are, are impacted by something like this. Uh, far more than, than us, uh, we're, 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 we, we may have a large outreach globally, but it's not because we have boots on the ground uh, globally. The only boots we have on the ground globally is me. Um, and right now that ain't happened either. So, um, but a lot of folks, uh, especially working in um, uh, context of universities and uh, that type of outreach. And so uh, for those who knew him, I did not know uh, Robert Zacharias. We never met, never spoke, never corresponded. Uh, I was benefited uh, about 15 years ago or so um, for a period of time um, in my Islamic studies by RZIM. Um, helped in my studying of Arabic, and so I'm very appreciative of that. And um, so we are uh, regularly reminded, if we will but listen, of the passage of time and the, uh, the shortness of, uh, of life, as we think about uh, many who have uh, gone over the past few years, uh, what we would call big names, uh, Norman Geisler and Ravi Zacharias and R.C. Sproul. And uh, um, the reality is that's going to continue. <laughs> that's, uh, that's how life here in a, in a fallen world is.